Welcome to this Lee Daniels art tutorial, Blender, the absolute basics. So firstly, Blender is an extremely powerful 3D animation, modeling and VFX toolkit, and it's completely free to download. You can download it free from blender.org. When you first open Blender, you get the default cube. To navigate the 3D space, click the middle mouse button to orbit. Holding shift while orbiting will pan around the scene. And using the scroll wheel will zoom in and out. If you're using an Apple mouse, use the trackpad to orbit. Hold shift and trackpad to pan around the scene. And command and the trackpad to zoom in and out. To move your object around the scene, there are three common transform controls. G on the keyboard is grab, and this alters the position of the object. R rotates the object, and S scales. When you activate any of the transforms, Blender automatically starts the move. You can either click the mouse to confirm, or press escape at any time to cancel to move the object to its original state. Every move you make in Blender will be done so based on three axes of 3D space, represented by the red line X, the green line Y, and Z is represented by a blue line, which is not currently visible, but you can activate it by going up to the overlays menu and hitting Z. You can also see a representation of the three axes in the top right corner. While performing any of the main transforms, you can lock the move to any of the three axes. So for example, you press G to grab, then straight after, if you press X, Y, or Z, it will lock it to the axes. And the same for rotate, press R, X, Y, or Z, and the same for scale. S, X, Y, or Z. Whatever transform you perform on an object, you can revert back to its original location by pressing the Alt key. Alt G cancels grab, Alt R cancels rotation, and Alt S cancels scale. To delete any object in a scene, select the object and press X and delete. To add objects to a scene, you go to the Add menu, Mesh, and here you'll see a wide range of primitives. Blender has several different modes to help you interact with scenes. All of the previous transforms were made in Object Mode. To edit the wireframe mesh of any object, Select the object and press tab. This opens up edit mode. In edit mode, you can see the mesh of the object and you can make changes to either the vertices, the edges, or the faces. The same rules apply in edit mode. G for grab, R for rotate, and S for scale. Pressing A selects the whole mesh. There are many ways to add geometry to a mesh, but a few of the main ones are extrude, inset, bevel, and loop cut. To use these features, choose the face select option and select the face of the cube, extrude, allows you to project a face and add new geometry to bridge it. This is a very quick way to add geometry to shapes. Inset allows you to create an inset ring of individual geometry on any selected face. Or when shift clicking, any combination of faces.
Bevel allows you to add a beveled edge to any selected face or edge. For additional options on any tool, you can open up this dialog box below. For the bevel, you can increase the segments and adjust the shape to make customized rounded corners. And finally, loop cut allows you to split a loop of faces by inserting a loop of edges. And you can do this by hovering over any edge and clicking the mouse button. You can also increase the number of loop cuts using the dialog box below. To get a more organic transform on objects with a detailed mesh, you can use proportional editing. Now if you select a point and press G to grab, you'll be shown a region of influence which can be altered using the middle mouse wheel or the tracker on an Apple mouse. The same proportion works for rotation and scale. Press tab to go back into object mode and right click on the mouse to bring up the object context menu and select shade smooth to soften the appearance of the sharp edges of the mesh. You can further smooth out the look of the mesh by using a modifier. Select the object, go to the modifier properties, add modifier, subdivision surface. Increasing the levels increases the detail of the effect. By default, Blender opens in the solid shader view with a flat generic color, and it's good for modeling. But to add materials to your objects, we need to change the viewport shading to the material preview. Now, if you select your object and go to the materials tab, you can alter things like the base color, the metallics, and the roughness. And the material preview will give you a good idea of how your materials will act in an environment. You can also select a couple of different environment shaders to see how your material acts in different scenarios. But this is just a look dev preview and not how it will appear in the final render. For that, we need to go over to the render preview. Click on the render tab and make sure your engine is set to Eevee which is Blender's real-time render engine. Zooming right out, we can see the other two default objects in the scene, a camera and a light. If you move the light around in the render view, you'll get a real-time update. To see what the camera sees, press zero on the number pad. Any render you perform will be rendered from the camera's point of view. If you try to navigate from here, you'll break out of the camera view. To remain in camera and physically move it yourself, press zero to go back to the camera view, press N to bring up the additional scene options, and then in the view tab, select lock camera to view. Now, when you navigate, the camera itself will move and you can position your render how you like. In the World Properties tab, you can choose a colour for your background, then go to Render, Render Image. 
then from the render preview, you can save. This was just a very brief overview of a few of the most basic functions in Blender. Please hit like and subscribe if you found it useful, and let me know in the comments what features you'd like to see in future Blender and After Effects tutorials. Thanks for watching.